Hello. Let's talk a little bit today about business rules. Uh, business rules are a feature that allows you to create certain user experiences that help the user experience on the form or with the entity, as well as control the way that data is manipulated and implement business logic. In other words, they're really cool, lightweight configuration features that allow you to apply like conditional situations and formatting of the form or the information that people are entering in CRM. So a long time ago, we did lots of things with JavaScript to try to give the user a better experience or to try and control certain types of business information uh, that was being entered into the Microsoft Dynamics platform or Microsoft CRM. Back uh, a few years ago, uh, through a couple updates in the application, Microsoft implemented the concept of business rules, I think in 2011 or 2013. Um, if you know, maybe put it in the comments, that would be cool. Uh, but uh, maybe um, they, they, they implemented these features to kind of remove the amount of scripting that was going on and to give administrators an easy plug and play way to get the same kind of functionality out of all these scripts that people were coming up with to try to control things. So today, uh, really quick, we're going to create some business rules. And I'm also going to create an option set and kind of do things uh, a little bit differently. I usually do the cooking show. So this video is going to be a little bit longer than normal, uh, but it is going to give us more of a, of a walkthrough of a lot of different things that are going to change. So first off, I'm going to create a new field, uh, and I'm going to call this size. You'll notice that I go right into the form from the main CRM system. Uh, solutions are a better way to do this and a much easier way to kind of configure these out um, rather than coming in through here. But for the video's sake, it's a lot easier for me to get you in and show you things than go into a solution. So I have a video about solutions and the best practice of them. You can click on, I'll put a link to that while I'm talking uh, in post-production, but just know that I don't necessarily do things the best way. I just do them the most convenient way for the sake of making a video. So I'm creating an option set here called size. And the idea here is that I'm gonna track the size of an account. So, uh, the first size is going to be small, the second size will be medium, and the third size is going to be large. Um, and so what I'm creating right now is an option set, that's the data type. Uh, think of it as like a drop down menu or pick list inside CRM. The default value I'm just going to leave is unassigned, I'm going to hit save and close. And then uh, because I'm using Chrome, I have to hit new in order to get that to appear down here. Um, but once it does, I can then drop size. I'm going to put it right down underneath account name. And I'm going to save and publish this change. So as soon as this finishes publishing, I'll be able to come back into my account here. And we'll see that the size has been added as an option set with no value in it by default. So right here is the size, and I can pick small, medium, and large, small, medium, large, um, nothing, right? By default, um, you know, I can pick whatever I want. What's interesting is there's this, this number of employees field. I've made this required, um, but I can enter in the number of employees. So I can put zero, or I could put a thousand. What would be really cool is if when I put in the number of employees, it updated the size automatically based on what I've decided as a business, different buckets or groupings of the number would create. So let's say a small business is anything that has less than 50 employees and a medium is less than 500 and a large is anything else that's greater than that. In order to do that automatically so my users don't have to come in here and set this after they've typed that in, um, I can create what's called a business rule. So let me go ahead and do that. You'll see that that's required. Let me throw a zero in there. Um, so let me jump into the form, and we'll create a business rule for this form. So drop in, hit new business rule. We're going to first give this a name. I like to call this um, by the field name first, and then what it's doing. So this is jbcrm size dot, and I'll say set value because that's really what's going on here. And then in the description, I'll type in what this business rule is doing. So set the value of the size based on the number of employees, right? And so I can save that. And this condition here, I will type in uh, 
if NOE is less than 50, right? This is shorthand, so I can see it from the screen. I have to define it down here in the rules section. So I'm going to say if the number of employees, and I'll say is less than, and then the value will be 50, and I'll scroll down and hit apply. Um, then I will set the value, set the field value, and then here I'll say set size, SM. And we'll come down here and choose size, value, and we'll pick small from the list and hit apply. And so this is saying if the number of employees is less than 50, and set the size to small. What's cool about the business rule editor is that you can copy and paste these. So I can come and say in the not condition, so if it's not less than 50, I can come in here and say if the number of employees is less than 500, and then I have to update this down here is less than 500, apply. Then I can set the size to medium. So medium, and then I'll just change this to medium, right? Hit apply. And then otherwise, I'm going to set the size to large regardless. So if it's not less than 500, not less than 50, then I'm just going to say this is large and hit apply. And I can save. And just ignore that and we should be good to go and then I can activate so now when I come back and let me just jump back into my account on this form it's going to automatically update that so this is set to small automatically and if I put this to 501 and move off of the field we'll see that it goes to large uh, if I say it's 150 employees, it'll then be medium. This happens in real time, automatically. And so uh, it doesn't save automatically, but it updates it automatically. If I move it back to 501, it'll change it, and then you'll see I'll be prompted to save. There's unsaved changes. So I can hit save, and then it updates it. It's really cool. It's a really cool feature. You can also show and hide fields. You can make fields read-only or not read-only. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do inside the business rules uh, in order to get that done. Um, one thing that I like to do is try to kind of take it to the next level and make sure that the business rules I'm implementing aren't confusing for anybody. Maybe somebody's new to the organization or just in general as, as a user, something about this could be a little bit confusing. The fact that I could change this to small still, even though the number of employees is set to 501, I might hit save and then when it refreshes, it goes back to large. If I'm not really clear, as the administrator, I know what's going on. I made the rule. But the sales guy out in the field who's trying to do their job, they're not going to know what the heck's going on here. Uh, so one thing I would do is I would make this read only. Um, and so we can jump into the size and the form. We can open this up and uh, change the properties of that field. And we can make it read only. And just ignore that. I'm having a lot of browser issues today, so... Just ignore those when they pop up. All right, and let me jump back in. When I refresh this, we will see that that's now read only. So now I can't change this. Uh, all I can do is change the number of employees. Uh, 150, it'll change to, to medium. Uh, maybe there's 40 people here and it changes to small. That's really cool. The next thing that you have to look at or that we need to talk about is business rule scope. Uh, so you might have not seen it, but at the top here, there's a section that says scope, and then it says account. What this means is that this is only running on this form, on the main form for the account. It's the only time that this business rule is applied. And to show you, I'm going to use advanced find, and we will add some columns here. Let's look at the number of employees and the size, because those are the two things that we're uh, adjusting with this business rule. So let's look at number of employees. And let's look at the size and hit OK. And we'll see these two things side by side. And hit OK and we'll see the results. So here's the sizes and the number of employees. Now, if you remember from our rule configuration, if I, I'm just going to move this to another window, if I create a new account and I'll use the Quick Create form, I have a video on Quick Create forms that you can check out. Uh, I'll put a link to that uh, floating somewhere probably right now while I'm talking. Uh, but the, uh, the account name, 
Uh, let's call this, uh, we'll call this business rule test one or BR test one, the number of employees. Let me say that this is 150. So this should be a medium sized uh, business. Well, because that rule is only firing on that main form, you'll see that this isn't obeying it. Now, if I jump in here, it'll say medium when the page loads. Uh, the size will be medium when I click this link because it's gonna open the main account form and that's where our business rule is firing. So we'll see it's set to medium. Um, and then it'll save automatically when I close the screen. And so that's why it updated to medium back here. If I create another one, let's create BR test two. And we'll make this uh, 1500, right? So we're definitely a large account. Um, let's look at our advanced find again. And we'll see that it's small, right? So how do we fix this? And the answer to that is we use and we update the business rule scope. And in order to do that, we need to deactivate the business rule. So let's deactivate it and let's change the scope. We can set it to run on all forms. We can set it to run on specific forms or we can have it run at the entity level. I'm gonna choose entity level. The difference between entity and all forms is this means that the number of employees is going to dictate the size, medium, small, or large of that option set field regardless of how the information enters CRM, whether somebody uses a web API and it's a web service that's connecting the CRM to create that account, or whether it's uh, somebody's using the import data tool. They don't necessarily have to be on a form. This could be entered anywhere that it's gonna enter the system or maybe an ETL tool like Kingsway Soft or Scribe Online. Um, that could create an account uh, with the number of employees, it will create it when it update that size uh, based on that value. So this business rule is going to fire beyond the capabilities of JavaScript on the form. This is going to fire no matter how that entity is created, almost like a workflow. So uh, let's go ahead and create another test really quick in our system. Uh, we'll make this one BR uh, test th three. And the number of employees will do 1,500. Let's do 25,000. Make it super big. Save. All right. And now let's look at advanced find here. And we'll see that that's set to large automatically. And so what you're seeing is that this business rule is now firing no matter how that, that account is created, not just on that specific form. Pretty cool. Um, so now we've kind of, that was a bug that we created and we resolved it uh, due to the scoping of our business rule. I hope this was helpful. If you have any other questions about business rules, workflows, solutions, forms, fields, anything, feel free to put those in the comments below. Um, I look forward to making some more videos for you soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hope you have a great night. Bye.